Isotuximab is a CD38 targeting antibody um, that represents an important new addition to the therapeutic armamentarium in myeloma therapy. Daratumumab obviously has dominated the CD38 space for some time and is now being approved in the upfront setting. Isotuximab provides an important new option in our opinion for the treatment of relapsed refractory disease. And where we stand with the ACARIA trial is that we found with Isotuximab through its a specific mechanism action, which is a, to target a very uh, particular part of the epitope of CD38 expressed on the uh, myeloma cell surface, um, that it actually not only generates a multitude of immunological effects similar to daratumumab, with the exception of activating less complement, which is important for infusional characteristics. But what's really interesting about isotuximab is it targets the apoptotic mechanism, and at the same time it has this ectoenzymic property, which allows it to really engage that particular aspect of the receptor. And we believe that's important because it may also uh, have other immunological effects that are contributing to its efficacy overall, but this apoptotic signaling may in fact set it apart a little um, from other antibodies in the same class. So in combination with pomalidomide, we demonstrated it was very active, very well tolerated. We saw in our phase 1b trial a progression-free survival median that was in excess of 17 months, which given how sick the patients was, sorry, were, I beg your pardon, um, you know, was quite remarkable. So all of this provided the rationale for the randomized trial. And in this study, which is the first of its kind to be reported to date, we looked at relapsed refractory disease in which both proteasome inhibition and lenalidomide exposure had occurred and in which over 90% of the patients were lenalidomide refractory. So this was very important because this is an unmet medical need. And what we looked at was whether pomalidomide and dexamethasone with the addition of isotuximab resulted in superior outcome to pomalidomide and dex alone, which is the current standard. And in that context, we were very pleased to see a substantial progression-free survival advantage. What we saw was approximately 12 months of disease control for the three drugs versus approximately six months for the control group, doubling of response rate overall, doubling of quality of response overall. And what was fascinating, Thomas, was to see a suggestion that there was survival benefit already, which with relatively early follow-ups, only about a year, was quite striking. So time to next therapy was another endpoint we looked at, and again, that was significantly longer for the three drugs versus the two. And what we also looked at was safety, and there were no new signals that were of particular concern. You know, there's a little bit more neutropenia, there are chest infections, all of these things are manageable. Then, very importantly, we also looked at other surrogates, particularly subgroups, and we saw that high-risk patients benefited from uh, the three-drug combination, patients with renal dysfunction, patients who were truly lenalidomide refractory, all of those important groups derived substantial benefit from the three-drug combination. And in fact, the hazard ratio for the lenalidomide refractory patients was 0.5. Um, the hazard ratio overall was around uh, 0 0.58, 0 0.59, which was within the range of 0.6 that was predetermined in the trial design. So clearly we met our primary endpoint, and these other key secondary endpoints are all looking very good.